Hello, my name is Robin Hartley and welcome to my channel Hartley Hacks. In this video I'd like to show you how I created my own sonic screwdriver which can control anything plugged into a mains plug socket in my house. Now the way this works is that you can buy wireless plug sockets like this and they come with a remote control and this sends a wireless signal which is picked up by this and it can turn on or off. Now the clever bit is that you can buy the wireless module in here and I got one and put it inside my sonic screwdriver. Now this means when I've then got my plug socket plugged into the mains like this, I could press the button on my sonic screwdriver and turn it on and off. And of course anything which is plugged in there, so lights, hair dryers, 3D printers, anything I want can be controlled then just with a press of the button on my sonic screwdriver. So in this video I'm going to take you through the 3D prints and how I designed them and also the electronics inside here. I'll then show you a little bit about the assembly and then finally we'll test it out on a couple of different things around my house. So we're going to start by diving into the electronics. I knew from the outset of this project that I'd need to make the circuit really small and compact so it could fit inside the sonic screwdriver. And for this I chose to use an 80 tiny 85 microcontroller. With this decision made I then set about designing a circuit board which could fit the 80 tiny and I added a wireless transmitter, some resistors, LEDs and an all important button to control it. With this printed out I then checked it over and I was happy with the design so I sent it away for fabrication and a couple of weeks later I got the finished boards back in the post and soldered them up. Okay, so here you can see the finished circuit board. Now the most obvious part of this, of course, is the big battery which is stuck onto the bottom. And the easiest way I found to attach that was just by using an elastic band, as you can see here. Now on the top we've got our 80 tiny 85 microcontroller and the radio module which actually sends the signal to turn the sockets on and off. It's got a little uh, wire antenna you can see here and that's just so that that signal travels really well. Now on the top we've got some LEDs and they're protected by resistors you can see here and both the LEDs and the radio are turned on by pressing this button here, as you can see. Now one problem I did have is that the battery outputs 1.5 volts, but the 80 tiny and the radio module require 5 volts, and that's where this little board you see here comes in. Now what that does is it takes in the 1.5 volts from the AA battery and then steps it up to 5 volts, which is required by the 80 tiny and the radio module. I started the design by making a detailed 3D model of the circuitry and used this as the foundation which I designed everything else around. Now I sort of drew inspiration from Jodie Whittaker's sonic screwdriver. She's the most recent Doctor Who and the most recent series was actually filmed in Sheffield which is my hometown. Now her sonic screwdriver is made out of Sheffield steel, mine's going to be made out of Sheffield plastic but it's as best as I can do. Now for the colours I decided to add a splash of my own style. I used yellow, black and blue which are the colour schemes from my blog. And as you can see, the actual design I went for is basically in two halves, which split apart so that I can put the circuitry in the middle between them. Okay, so now you're up to speed with the electronics and design, it's time to show you how it all came together with some snippets of video detailing the assembly process. Okay, so I've got all of my components printed out and ready to be assembled, so I'm just going to take you through them before I glue it all together. Now, the main bit, of course, is I've got my circuit mounted inside one half of the casing here, and that's actually held in and supported by this internal structure you can see here, so all these little stands which are inside. Now, that's one half of it. The two halves, of course, come together and surround the circuitry like that quite nicely. Now, one problem you'll see, of course, is that I can't press the button, but I did think of this, and I have created this little hat-shaped thing which sits on top, and that goes in there like that, so when I put it together, I can now press my button quite happily and it'll light up the LEDs and trigger the radio. So onto the LEDs on the front, I'll also add this little plate with the three holes in, and that'll sit over nicely like that. And the reason I've done that is so that these conical elements at the front, which have got a groove you can see there, will actually fit over that and add this sort of cool coloured bit at the front, which you can see there. 
Now in a similar fashion on the back I'm going to add these two yellow things and they've, they've got a, a groove in the middle as well into which sits this little black circle here. So they're going to go like that, come round and these ones are going to sit on the back as well just like that. So I'm going to crack out my super glue and glue it all together. Now because this is battery powered I need to be careful that if I ever need to change the battery in the future I can still open it back up. So what I've done is I've added some little circles you can see here and here and they're going to be the only places I place glue so that I know if I do need to open it up it's only in a couple of few places and I'll know where they are. All right let's crack on with the gluing. Alright, so here I have my finished sonic screwdriver all assembled. Now it took a lot of glue, like a series amount of glue to get it to stick together and I had to hold it for ages but it's pretty much there now. And actually it fits really nicely in my hand, it's really comfortable there and my thumb just fits nicely above the button. It's a little bit wobbly that button but it's not the end of the world. Um, and the best bit of course is that the electronics survived the journey so it still works, it turns things on and off, fantastic. Now it's not perfect, there are some uh, gaps in the casing around here, so this is probably where it 3D printed, not quite right or just warped a little. Um, and there are some fairly big layer lines, I'm not sure if you can see them there, just across here. So it's not perfect, but for a first stab I'm really pleased with it. And going forward of course I could always sand it back and then do a paint job over the top of it. So the last thing to do is to uh, basically show you how it works by running around my house turning things on and off. So enjoy this little montage coming up. Okay, so that is the end of my Sonic Screwdriver project. Thank you very much for watching this video. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on the 3D print files or find out about the circuitry I use, then I've actually put a blog post in the description which you can go and look at to find out more and also to see some of the lessons I learned along the way, which I didn't manage to include in this video. Now, if you'd like to get in touch with any questions or thoughts, then always feel free to leave a comment. I always enjoy to see them. And apart from that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider giving it a like or even subscribing. Apart from that, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.